Okay, today we're going to do another quick example in Python using Selenium. In this case, we're going to uh, inspect an element and get its color. Uh, this was inspired by a question on Quora. Can we check the color in a test using Selenium? I answered this question. I gave two quick answers. Uh, number one, you can get the CS value of an element. It'll return the color or the background color or whatever other uh, CSS property that exists on that. Um, in Java, here's the code, or in Python, you do value of CSS property. The other way is you can actually take a screenshot and you can expect the color of any particular pixel in, uh, in either your web page or in a specific element, and I'm gonna show you how you can do that. Uh, so let's go ahead, I'll open up a terminal here. Got a nice big font size. And let's go ahead and close that window. Um, so first thing I want to do is let's make sure we have Selenium installed. So pip install Selenium. It should work for me. And then there's another library we want to install. We want to pip install Pillow. Pillow is a fork of the Python image library. And I already have that installed. So those are the two things you need installed. Selenium and Pillow. Okay, so let's go ahead and open IPython and get started my screen there from selenium import uh, web driver and driver equals web driver dot chrome it's going to open my browser there and i'm actually going to uh maximize that although sometimes hope oh, that didn't work because it's going to be a different size than this. If it crashes, oh well. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna driver.get and I'm gonna use my own website, oneshore.com. Uh, it's not a spectacular website, but it's my own. Okay, so we see here, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna get a color. I wanna figure out what these different colors are. I can get the colors on the page. So this dark blue, or the white, the light blue, uh, the medium blue. And then I'm also going to inspect my logo here and get the value for the colors in there. Um, so first thing we can do is we can do driver um, save screenshot. And I can save a screenshot of the whole page. And uh, I'm just going to save it to page.png. And it goes there. And hop back over. Returns true. All right. Uh, now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and save it right now. I'm going to save a screenshot of just my logo element. So let's go ahead and inspect that there. And I'm going to make the font bigger here so we can see that. Inspect uh, this element. So what I want is this one chore logo. And we'll go back to that in a minute. Uh, so let's do driver.findElement uh, by CSS selector. And I'm going to, here in my Chrome inspector, I'm going to test it out. Uh, find by string x pass. So what I want to do is I want to do uh, div.oneshore.logo. And that works. That identifies my element there. And you can see it's highlighted up here. And it's all good. Okay, so I'm going to grab that selector and paste it in here. And uh, call this logo element. And I can do logo element dot uh, text, I guess. And it's one, and then it has a new line in short. And that's just because there's a there's a carriage, well, not a carriage return, a new line character in between these two spans as well as the image. So we've we've got the logo element. Uh, we can also do driver um, title. Make sure we're on the page. One short test automation. Okay. So that's good. Now, in order to, I've, I've saved a screenshot of the page. What I want to do is I want to save an, a, a screenshot of the logo too. So I do driver, uh, not driver, I do logo element dot just screenshot, right? So, and then I want to save this as a uh, logo dot PNG. All right, so, and I can ls star PNG. And I've got these two elements, logo.png and page.png, these files that I can actually open and see if I want to. Um, 
But let's go ahead and hop back over. I've done everything I need to do in WebDriver. So now what I need to do is I need to from uh, PIL import image with a capital I. All right, and then I can load an image, right? So I can say uh, page uh, image equals uh, image dot open page dot png, and we can see my page image exists here. Um, but we can't do anything with that really. Uh, well, there's a lot we can do with that. For instance, we can uh, get the size. Um, what is it? Uh, I think it's just size. Oops. And, okay, and that returns a tuple, and then we can get width, and we can get height. So the width is 1920, and the height is 934. And you can see size just returns a tuple of those two values. And that'll come in handy because then we can measure the, the top and the bottom. Let's actually, I wonder if we, um, if that screen capture is going to look different based on whether or not we have the dev tools up. So that'll be interesting. Um, I'm not going to figure it out now. All right, so next thing what we want to do is we want to do uh, pixels equals page image uh, dot load. And now pixels is this pixel access element. And we can get um, the pixels, uh, we can get like the top left, which should be a dark blue. And this 69, uh, 102. And then uh, I think Google will help me out here. Um, there we go. It's a, it's a dark blue, uh, like my logo up there, or like my top banner. And then we can get the lower right-hand side, so we're going to get something over here. Uh, how can we get that? Well, we need to get the lower right. Um, we've got the width and height, but if we try... Um, Uh, page image width and page image height, it's going to say, well, it's it's out of bounds. So we need to do minus one on these. Pixels. Oh, it's not a function. It is a array object. One of this. So we've got this 69.102. Says it's the same color. Well, maybe it is. Uh, yeah, I guess it is. It just looks lighter uh, on my screen, which is kind of weird. Okay, on OBS it looks more similar. Okay, so they're the same color. And then if I pick a random uh, size in the middle, right, uh, say 500 comma 500, it'll probably be white or not. 500 comma 500, maybe it's hitting one of these letters here. And uh, let's actually check out that color and see what it looks like. Kind of similar to that. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm guessing that's in here somewhere. Uh, let's try another spot. We'll hunt around here. 500 comma 600, 241. Let's see what that looks like. That might be the light blue. Yeah, that's the light blue. So we're hitting somewhere in here. All right, um, that's kind of hard to figure out what you want by guessing at the pixel location, right? I suppose I could measure this, get some uh, browser plugin that can tell me that's this location or whatever. But uh, we don't want to do that. We want to automate. So let's get a single element, right? Um, so I've got my logo, right? Uh, logo element 
And oh, that's right, I already saved my screenshot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say logo image equals image dot uh, open logo dot png, right? Okay. Uh, and then my logo image, it should be like 100 by 50 pixels, right? So if I get the size on that, it's not a tip. Okay, so it's it's 228 pixels wide by 50 high. Um, so there's my image size, and then I can do a uh, logo image uh, load, and that's that'll give me my pixels. And then I can say pixels. Uh, in this case, 0, 0.0 or 0, comma 0 should be the top left, and it's 255. So the um, the logo object, um, if you grab here, the top left is going to be white when it's not highlighted. Um, so we need to like let's try and get the bottom. The, the okay, so the the top left we know is uh, is 0 comma 0. And I can do pixels top left. Uh, again, it is an array type, not a, not a function. Okay, so that works. Um, and then the same thing, what I can do is I can say um, logo image dot size. That's uh, 228.50. So I can pass that in. I can pass in the tuple and it'll interpret as the two values. So pixels, logo image size, uh, uh, and that's not going to work. So what do I need to do? I need to get the size in a different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to interpret that. I'm going to use a like a list comprehension, I'm going to use a tuple comprehension. So I could do, um, right, for a list, I could do i for i in uh, one, two, three, uh, something like that. And uh, let's do for a range, uh, I don't know, we'll do range five. And then I can print that. Um, or I can do something like uh, I times 2 and manipulate that. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, whatever. Who do we appreciate? Um, so I can do that with a list comprehension. I can do similarly for tuples, right? I can um, I can create a tuple, 3, 6, 9, and I just change that. Uh, so I don't have a list, I have a tuple, right? This here is my tuple comprehension. And this here, 369, is a tuple. And that returns a generator. So what I need to do is I need to take that generator object and I need to not cast it to a temple, I need to cast it to a tuple. And we're looking at lisp level of parentheses here. Um, but anyway, so we get uh, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, and I'm going to assume that 9 times 2 is 18 because that's too hard of a math problem for me. So we've got our we've got our uh, a, a tuple comprehension, and I don't even know if that's the right word for it, but that's what I call it. Um, now, what's my tuple? My tuple is my uh, logo image dot size. It's too big, so what I want to do is uh, I'm going to replace this to uh, logo image dot size and it gives me well I don't want two times the size right it should be what is it 228 by 50 yeah um, so I'm going to do I minus one so right the size is the maximum number of pixels I want to do minus one so it's the lower right corner that's still in bounds so 227.49 and that's how I get my lower right Oops, I don't want to print it. I want to save it. Uh, yeah. All right, 
So I've, I have my lower right, and then I can do pixels, and I can pass my lower right um, coordinates. Uh, I'm never going to figure this out. And there we go. It's the same thing as doing pixels 227, comma 49. I literally am never going to figure this out. All right. Um, well, that's not going to help. Let's find the midpoint. All right. So how do we find the midpoint? Let's look at how we found our lower right. Our midpoint uh, is going to be similar, but it's going to be um, not I minus 1. It's going to be I divided by 2. And oh, we've got some decimal values, so I'm going to cast that to an int. All right, that looks good. One fourteen by twenty-five, and so I've got my midpoint, and I can do pixels. Check this out. You'll never believe this. I'm using brackets and not parentheses, <laughs> but I can't talk mid mod point. So here's my midpoint color 120 dot whatever let's go see what that is and see if it looks realistic it should be probably a blue or a gray oops I'm gonna do rgba yeah so it's a grayish blue from something somewhere in the shell i can probably move it over um I'll move it a little bit to the left and we'll see what that is so you can see it changes a little bit. Um, and it changes a different color so this is going to be a lighter gray and so forth. So I can expect my image but let's find out the color of one and sure. Alright so I'm going to have to go back to my driver. I'm going to do find element. Well I don't need to find from the driver. Um, I have my element Nope, uh, driver find element uh, by CSS selector. Uh, and it was div dot uh, one shore dot logo, right? All right, we've got our logo. So now I'm going to do logo element dot find element uh, by uh, find elements by tag name. And it's going to be span. So I'm going to get um, the one span and the shore span. Uh, here. And I suppose I could do something like one sure logo uh, span. I'm not there though, up here. And you can see I've got two, one and sure. So I, I could have done driver dot find elements, but we, we've got our spans here. And so let's check it spans zero the text should be one and spans one the text should be short so I can get the color uh, nope I want value of CSS property uh, and that would be a uh, color uh, and that would be my tan color if I inspect this and I get my computed value yep 204187170 that looks right um, and likewise for the first element, I can get the color. And that's 85.119.153. If I go here, yeah, 85.119. Okay, and I can do the same thing with this. I can do um, spans sub zero. Check, just check this again. The text is one, okay. Uh, what I wanna do is I want to take a screenshot of that element. All right, and I want to call it a uh, 1.png. And I'll do span sub 1.screenshot. 
I'm going to call it shore.png. I've got those four. I've got the logo. I've got the one. I've got the page. And I've got the shore. So now I can inspect uh, one short. And I'm not going to go through it. I just do image.open uh, one.png. Um, like that. And I go through the same thing, right? I'd, uh, I do pixels equals one image dot load. And I do pixels sub. Uh, and then again, this is because this image is actually going to be the outer barrier. It's going to be uh, white until we maybe if we get down to about 0 0.25, it's right on the edge of, of the O. So it looks like it's uh, maybe some anti -aspen. If I go about two pixels in, it should be 86.119. So that's really close to what's going on. And it's showing uh, my anti-aliasing here. If I get maybe a couple more pixels in, it's still coming back as 86 instead of 85. Uh, and 152 instead of uh, 153. So that, that's, that's a bit interesting that the pixel color from my saved image is slightly different. That was quite a incredible slight, slightly different. Um, anyway, um, so the colors are slightly different um, from the image library than from the actual CSS value. All right, that's it for today. Uh, we learned about uh, taking screenshots in WebDriver. You can take a screenshot of either the whole page or of an element, right? So I can do a uh, driver save screenshot and then save that to some URL. Um, and I also learned that uh, I can also uh, take a screenshot of, an, of a single element. Uh, I don't have an element right here handy. Oh, wait, uh, logo element is what it's called, right? Logo element dot. Uh, and it's just screenshot. And then uh, we also learned that we can get the value. So logo element. Actually, what we want to do is we want to have one, right? Uh, uh, we'll do spans sub zero. Uh, let's see. Yep, one. And then we can, we could actually take a screenshot of that as well, but we can uh, get the value of the CSS property uh, color. And that will give me a, a CSS color value in RGBA. Um, and we can also do that for background color. There you go, zero, zero, zero. Um, and then we also learned that we can use the, the Python image library, uh, also known as Pillow or PIL, right? Uh, in, and uh, we can get that image, and we can do image dot low or image dot open on an element, and we get uh, that. And then we can get the pixels for that image with dot load. And then we can actually inspect uh, various pixels. And it'll tell me the RGB color value, the RGB AA meaning alpha or transparency. So red, green, blue, alpha or transparency value of a particular pixel within an image. We also learned coincidentally that this is not quite, it's 87 and 153 or something like that or 85 and 153, we look over here in our background. Um, so you need to use a little fuzzy logic there. Um, and then lastly, we learned a little bit about using tuples and tuple comprehension. Um, so for instance, we can get the, uh, the bottom right of, of a tuple, the bottom right value by just like a list comprehension, I'm for i in each element in this tuple, I am subtracting one so that I don't get the very bottom. I get or I get the last pixel 
not outside the range of the image by one pixel or dividing by two to get the center. Um, yeah, so that's it for today. Tuple comprehensions were my favorite thing to learn in doing this. And uh, hope you have a good day. Bye. Oh, wait a second. Uh, for those of you who want to see a gist of the actual thing, so as, essentially this is the code that I created. Um, you can go ahead and get this on GitHub. I'll post this into the video text. Okay, goodbye.